All right. Welcome back, everyone, to Father's House Podcast. Uh, I am Alfredo Alberto. And I'm Lou Flua. And this week is week three. All right. Problems aren't all bad. So let's get into it. Ever wonder what distinguishes healthy, happy families from that those that flounder in endless frustration and turmoil? Like in uh, some TV shows. Well, uh, it isn't the presence or absence of problems, if that's what you're thinking. The fact is that all families have problems. The difference is that some families handle those problems effectively, while others often resemble the Simpsons, blundering from one episode to another. Another fact is that problems offer parents wonderful opportunities for teaching children qualities such as responsibility, cooperation, and courage and skills such as conflict resolution, negotiation, and of course, problem solving. And since our purpose as parents, as defined in week one, is to instill these and other qualities and skills that will enable our kids to survive in our modern democratic society, problems are truly opportunities for learning. And without them and the motivation they provide, we might just sit around watching reruns of old sitcoms all day. You want to jump in a little bit? Brett? Yeah. This? Oh, yeah. Um, the lesson for week three uh, really provides kind of like a frame for me. You know, when I see the opportunities either to take what I learned in the act of parenting and apply it, or in that moment, I'm like, okay, you know, take a knee, <laughs> take a knee. Uh, like Ethan, like I said, uh, we were talking earlier, you know, uh, wasted all the soap in the soap dispenser <laughs> to make a bubble bath for his toys in the sink, right? And so I go off on him like, hey, you know, and as soon as he hears my voice, he's, he runs, but he's scattering quick. And he goes, hides under his bed, you know, puts a sheet over his head. And then I'm like, okay, this could either be an opportunity for me to keep, you know, raising my voice and yelling or take a knee, right? Just take a knee and then just look at him and be like, hey, all right, come on. I need you to stop wasting the soap. All right. And really have a moment with them that'll stick, right? Or, you know, keep yelling at him and <laughs> he'd be fearing his dad all his life. But it's a good, healthy fear. Right, like we fear in the Lord, right? right. Dad, but the good thing that you know, actually pause for a moment and say, okay, if I take a knee, then you know, we'll probably be able to to have a dialogue or a discussion, you know, and build that up as a routine when he's you know five, or seven, or you know, it's preteen, tweens, and even the teen years, especially mm -hmm. man, especially. Yeah. Um, the, the, the conflict resolution part really stuck stuck out to me. Um, I think it's I think it's really important um, um, that you do have those problems. I mean, that's probably synonymous with with having kids, with the the problems and the the hiccups going along the way. Um, kind of remind me about week uh, week one when we were talking about um, you know I wish my uh, <clears throat> talking about my dad was a great dad. Um, he, he was always there. Uh, to show example, but uh, yeah, really important to have those uh, conversations, right? Uh, especially with uh, the younger ones, and probably yeah, probably more so when they get older too, because you know there's going to be a lot more, yeah, there's going to be a lot more kind of talking, and um, um, or, or, or a lot more conversation that needs that needs to happen. You know, you need that dialogue as opposed to when they're younger, you can kind of like make them do it because they're just younger, right? They're just small and they're gonna to have to do it. But as they get older, you know, you're gonna you're gonna have those resistance, um, and you're gonna to have to talk it out a lot more. Uh, and and then, you know, it, I think it helps them too to uh, understand what they're dealing with, uh, breaking down issues, and not just being uh, you know, I, I tell my kids too not not to be emotional, you know, uh, you know, use your logic too, you know, think things through, not just like uh, jumping, flying off the the handle and just you know, whatever feels right at the moment, because it, it doesn't, it's not always the right thing at the moment, right? Uh, 
I was just reading uh, about uh, Corinthians about uh, I forget how it goes, but uh, not all things are, are not all things good or profitable, right? And uh, I forget exactly how it goes, but I mean, you get my idea. Uh, you get the idea of what I'm trying to say is you know it, it might feel good at the moment, but you know it might not be profitable later. But uh, yeah, definitely should uh, have those conversations with your kids and working out uh, those. Uh, Anger problems, responsibility, cooperation, um, all those, all those good things. And that's such an amazing point because today I was teaching a class for fourth and fifth grade, and you know, I talked to Evan about that as well. And it was about fairness, mm. but in that story of fairness was learning how to be humble. Yeah. Like you know, be worried about oh, okay, you know, just me, me, me all the time. Mm. Uh, just to give you a backstory, it was a story of. Uh, Sammy the squirrel, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and so from this uh, habits from seven, the seven happy kids, or I might be getting that wrong, but anyway, Sean Covey, the book, and it was about, you know, squirrel, he's asking everybody else, right, um, how to have fun. So he's going to everyone else how to have fun, but everybody else's fun is going to be different from the kind of fun that he, he likes, because from the very beginning, from the very beginning, he's a, you know, it describes him as a what they call a tinker, mm. right? He likes to do things with his hands, mm -mm. take things apart, build them back up. And so I told this, uh, the students today, you know, that that's how you become really a difference maker. You know, you you know, you create, you keep building on what you're good at as well. Um, so we have, you know, a lot of time. You may have some time to work on the weaknesses, but when you know you're good at something, mm. you know, don't don't veer too far left from that because that you know, turn into a career, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. an engineer or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but the whole point was, you know, also we can get too stuck in our own things, um, you know, to look at others. So mm -hmm. how the story ended was he actually uh, refurbished <laughs> or he rebuilt mm -hmm. a radio that was broken outside of, um, it was called uh, Tagalog Alley. Like, you know, she tag along to everybody else in the story. Uh, she would have a sick, she was sick. She had a th sore throat. Um, so he said, okay, well, let me rebuild the radio so while uh, she's getting over her sore throat, she can listen to music. Mm -hmm. You know, so then he went outside of his own box, his head, and it's like, okay, let me do this for this person. And that kind of gave him something to do for someone else to make them feel better versus mm -hmm. like, okay, focusing just on ourselves. Right? Mm -hmm. And the other thing was, uh, you know, asking them, how is it being fair to others? And having that dialogue, it was very hard. It was very difficult yeah. for the fourth graders. Fifth graders, they, they knew where we were going. Mm -hmm. So we had a great dialogue, dialogue and discussion. Um, but the fourth grade, it was like, there may have been some bullies in there. Like, right. hey, you know, uh, you know, I've been done, you know, been treated unfair. So I'm not going to treat others, mm. you know, fair. So that there was a lot of resistance to that. Mm. Uh, and may have been because the teacher was not there. But anyway, uh, it's interesting how it's just one topic, but that one topic can go in so many directions. Uh, that was very refreshing for me to see where they were at. And the and on top of that, you know, I got to share with them stories of, you know, how I raised my kids, mm. ask for apologies when, when dad crosses the line, or I even ask forgiveness. But I told them, I don't force my kids to forgive me. Mm -hmm. I told them like that, right? But I, I, you know, to Evan, you know, because he's the, the eldest, mm -hmm. he's like, oh, dad, you already apologized for that before. And I go, okay, right. But I do ask for your forgiveness for real, for real. You know? sure. But only forgive me when you know that you really are genuine about it, mm -hmm. you know, not because dad says to forgive him. Right. So then in that, he has two lessons. One, that his dad is asking, can ask for forgiveness, mm -hmm. that he's still, you know, um, part of the sanctification process, mm. you know, uh, and that when he gets to that age in relationship building, right, he's about to go into his adventure phase, he's about to be 12, that when he has a disagreement mm. with friends or fam, you know, he can say, hey, yo, my bad. Humble himself and ask wow. for forgiveness. And that could be like part of who he is, part of his character. Mm. And that's what I was telling the driving the point today with those students is that this is going to become built in part of your character. Mm -hmm. And if you resist it, then, you know, it's going to take a little longer to, to learn that lesson. Yeah. But yeah, 
Hit that kind of sound when you're trying to explain something uh, simple to a young kid. It's, it's actually harder than you think, you know, because it's like within the simplicity lies is complexity, right? It's like, it's really hard to explain that. Like, uh, I mean, I, I had that thing too with, uh, with, my, uh, with my youngest daughter about being fair. She's like super literal, right? Like tick for tack. Like, I'm nice, you're nice. You're mean, I'm mean, right? So trying to get her to wrap her mind to the right. Yeah, right. Yeah, she straight up old testament, right? Just <laughs> and I try to I try to get her to wrap her mind around uh, uh, my younger son. You know, he's three, so uh, giving him a little more grace than he deserves. And she's like, "Well, I was fair to him, and he's not being fair to me." And I'm like, "Well, I get that. But you're gonna have to work that out of him. You know, you got you have to show him how to be fair for him to understand what fair is." Yeah, you know, I mean, even if you have to like show him like three, four five, seven times 70, you know, yeah. you know you, you're going to have to rep that out. Yeah. And, and eventually he's going to catch on to it. And when he does, he's going to understand like, oh, fair, you know, share, you yeah. know, don't be mean, don't hit, you know, mm-hmm. uh, don't take this, don't just grab it. But uh, yeah, man, um, I have that problem too. Just being, uh, you know, uh, just being lazy, you know, just, I want it to work right now. You know, like how you were saying, like, uh, I, forgive me right now, you know, I, you know, I, I work the opposite, right? I'm like, you know, I apologize. <laughs> you need to forgive me right now. And it's like, nah, that's not how it works, you know? And eventually she does come around, uh, you know, uh, that's why it's so important to have these dialogues. Mm-hmm. So, so you can actually get the lesson yourself. And it's not just the kid, it's the parent too. You know, uh, like I didn't realize that, you know, um, like, yeah, they don't forgive you right then and there, just like anyone else. I'm expecting like, oh, they're, they're supposed to just get it, but it's not. They're just like anyone else, you know. I apologize to them, and you know, just give them, give us the space. They gonna come around, right? But trying to force the issue is definitely not gonna help anyone, right? Yeah, yeah that's that's good stuff, man. And the greatest thing is when I tell Emily and I tell she's seven, and I tell Evan about to be twelve. I'm like, okay, tell me how old your brother is. And then like four. Okay, so this boy has only been on the planet Earth for four <laughs> years. <laughs> You have been yeah. on planet Earth for seven, right, right. Emily, and you have been on planet Earth for 12, yes. Evan. Yeah. So you have an understanding and, 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 you know, about what, how being fair is for seven years. Mm-hmm. You, 12. Right. So he's not, you know, right. he's barely getting there. But at the job. stage of level, development, he's going to understand what a three-year-old understands. Mm-hmm. Ethan is going to understand what, what a four-year-old understands. Right. And it has to be um hmm. like like they're you know they're big boys but baby steps yeah you know baby steps and if they're not presented with baby steps the concept is too big to deconstruct themselves mm. you know they're like uh what <laughs> yeah and, and 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 you have to like literally show them how that concept looks right i mean just like i mean for me i, I you know I, I like concepts you know uh it helps me conceptualize everything but definitely like seeing it in action, you know. They have you may you might not uh no, maybe not. There was there was this old joke about this baseball game, and they were like talking about the stealing bases or whatever. And he, you know, the guy didn't get it until he actually like saw an actual baseball game with the guys running around the diamonds, and it's like, oh, I get it. They're stealing bases, you know. But you know, you you have to see it, you know. Same thing with the kids; they have to see it. They don't know what you're talking about. I mean. How else can they have? Uh, how else can they understand if they don't have anything to attach that to? You, know, you need to give them. You need to give them something. You know, an example. Yeah, huh, that's good. It's part of the five senses, right? Get, mm. I'm gonna get this wrong. Uh, see, taste, touch, feel, and hear. All oh, the senses, right? Okay, yeah. So they they got to go through all five of those in order to, um, right, to to understand. Mm. Right, some kids more than others, but. Yeah, they have to go through all that in order to, um, you know, get the concept. Or right. Basically, get it. Yeah, yeah, let me see it. Yeah, yeah. Show it to me. Yeah. Oh, there's that key. Right. And we're back. And we're back. So, got the dog. Dog got loose, but uh, so yeah, that was that was some good stuff. So uh, let me get into the activity of the week. It's called uh, notice and appreciate the bumps. A little boy was leading his younger brother up a mountain path to get a view from the top when the trail suddenly turned steep and bumpy. How are we going to hike up this? Asked the little brother in dismay. It's all covered with bumps. The big brother took his little brother's hand and calmly explained 
The bumps are what we walk on. True, the two brothers were never heard from again. But that's not the point. <laughs> the point is that the bumps in life are our opportunities. So this week, find the problems that you want to work on in your family. And if your two kids take off hiking up a steep mountain without an adult, ground a little behind us for a month. As you observe your family this week, write down some of the problems that you see as opportunities for teaching your children useful life lessons. Ooh, I went dark real quick. <laughs> so what are, what are the grids? All right, so we have, uh, we have two sides. Uh, one is the problems, and then uh, on the other side is the qualities and skills to be taught. Um, so what's the uh, example? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. So example is uh, the room is always messy. That's a problem. And that's a problem. And, and uh, the skills is, uh, and uh, qualities are uh, value, neatness, and organization, which is, that's, that's actually what we're on right now. Um, I wrote down some, uh, some chores for the kids. I just have to put it up on a whiteboard. But uh, uh, they're always running and asking me, like, where is this? Where is that? I'm like, well, did, did you put your shoes where they're supposed to go? You know, you know, we'll come back from practice and they're looking for their gi. Yeah, where's my gi? Well, did, did you put it where it was supposed to go? You know, we're, we're always having this back and forth, you know, uh, dialogue going on. But it's, you know, it's always the same. And I'm, I'm, I'm hoping um, maybe by the 700th time they'll pick up on it. But they've been slow to get it, you know, mm -hmm. but uh yeah, you, you definitely need those problems to actually teach the values and, and, and the life lessons, you know what I mean? It, I mean, they, they don't just learn that on their own, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, you almost, yeah, you, you need to teach it to them and you need to show them because, you know, they, they pick it up by you teaching and I guess through osmosis, I guess, they'll, they'll pick it up, <laughs> too, right? They just, just being around it, right? They just pick it up. They just pick it up. Kids are like sponges, you know? It's, mm -hmm. it's great, you know, uh, which is uh, the, uh, the upside of everything. Uh, yeah. being a parent with your kids because they do pick it up like yeah. like you don't even notice that they they're picking up the things you say uh things you do right yeah. just oh, being really. around yep. yeah it's crazy yeah mm -hmm. so no no but I, I was gonna piggyback on what you said like sometimes they're like you know like at, at your sketch it's like you know they did everything and all of a sudden they're just shooken up and it's like wait you forgot all that i mean just talking yeah. about it like, okay, like come on now it's like and then you have to actually <laughs> create a space for them with labels, yeah. you know, it's like, okay, you know, make it look like an actual, like, like a school, you know, right. it says coats, and over here it says shoes, mm -hmm. and over here it says, you know, label for gi, you know, it's like, that's, that's what they have to see initially, like, you know, in elementary, mm -hmm. and then when they get to middle school, they kind of, you yeah. know, get those concepts or whatever. Um, yeah, and that was what I was going to say earlier about, you know, uh, the heart, the heart, the bumps and things like that, the problems. You know, seven is a you know rapper. I'll just you know put, sneak it in here right now. You know, I was listening to what he was saying the other day on a quick you know podcast or just you know a, a YouTube video he had put up there. He was talking about studying the flames. And I was like, studying the flames? What are you even talking about? And as we go, you know, as born again believers, you know, go through the process of sanctification, it gets hot. You mm -hmm. know, it's like man, this is hard. Mm -hmm. Like you, you're like like uh, uh, one brother put it one time. He's like, you're like a, like a tooth. Like toothpaste, like a toothpaste tube being squeezed. Everything that is of you is being squeezed out so the Holy, more of the Holy Spirit can come in. And man, I'll tell you what, mm -hmm. some days be like, all right, stop squeezing me. Uh, <laughs> you know, and then so studying the flames is like, okay, what is this uh, bump or what is this flame teaching me about mm -hmm. my sanctification process right now? Right. You know, and that's where we catch it. Like, okay, let me learn it. And just like any other lesson for our kids, it's like, oh, you didn't learn it. Well, we're going to have to keep working on it, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. until we get it. Mm -hmm. So uh -huh. that's how we're God's children. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right, right, right. That's yeah, good. I mean, you need to go through the, uh, through the fire, right, mm -hmm. to, to, to come out the other end with fine. Mm -hmm. uh, probably more so when they're kids, you know, you got to keep you toss them in the fire, man. Yeah. <laughs> Something's coming out. Yeah. Something's coming out. You don't know what it is, but, you know, hopefully they'll pick it up. And I mean, they do, you know, it, man, it, it, it's such a great feeling, too, when they do pick it up, right? Mm -hmm. um, Very rewarding. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, you know, when uh, when I was going through teaching the girls how to, uh, how to read and write, oh, man, 
The second one was just rough. The, the first one picked it up really, really quick. And then when she did like get it, it was like, oh, it's awesome. Uh, I mean, it's always awesome when the kid just starts reading. It's like, oh, I did that, right? The second one was just, oh, it's rough. It was, oh, my mom was like, oh, man, I don't know if she's ever going to get this. And yeah, it, was, it was just, man, it was hard, dude. And then yeah. uh, and then she finally did get it. And then she's like, she's reading now. I'm like, oh, this is awesome. You know, it's, it's a great feeling, you know, rewarding feeling when the kids actually start picking it up, you know, putting their clothes away in the dirty laundry or throwing stuff away in the garbage or, yeah, man, it's awesome. So Yeah, what take, one takeaway before we, um, uh, before we close for today is, um, like the story of like a bamboo, a bamboo tree, right? right. Uh, bamboo tree digs his roots, gets his root system, because mm-hmm. what I've learned, right. right, deep. And then when the root system is deep, then the growth happens. Mm-hmm. You know, then the bamboo shoot starts to grow up, 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 almost like, you know, overnight. But just as an example, it starts to grow real quick, real fast. And if you ever had a bamboo tree in the backyard or, you know, uh, man, yeah, all of a sudden you start seeing little shoots everywhere in different parts or whatever. And one summer, uh, Leslie, she had actually dug it up. And man, I'm telling you, it took a big chunk of soil yeah. from the ground. And I was like, that is the most amazing root system I ever seen in mm-hmm. my life. I was like, it really got deep yeah. into that soil, yeah. you know, and it was, it stood, it stood its ground. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was it was very hard. Mm-hmm. It, it was tough getting, getting rid of it. So, you know, and that's how deep we want to, you know, take our kids' character mm-hmm. is that deep. But it's too hard for the world, other people to influence them. They're like, mm-hmm. I already know who I am. Yeah. You know, and let me try to tell you about, about Jesus real quick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah. they're influencing the culture, not the culture influencing them. So mm-hmm. that's one takeaway I got for today. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. So just piggybacking on that a little bit. I mean, uh, yeah, we had a, a bamboo tree too. And it's funny is that, uh, yeah, you, you want the roots to be deep like that because uh, I remember it was, a, it was a couple of times where uh, I didn't dig up the root and I just cut off the top and it just kept growing back up, you know, so yeah, you want that, right? You want your kids just to, yeah, you want it so far deep, deeply ingrained in their soil where it's just like, even if you took a little bit off, it's still growing, right? Yeah. You want that much of an impact with your kids. But yeah, that was good, man. That was great. All right. Well, thank y'all for joining us this week at, uh, on Father's House uh, podcast, and we'll join you next time on week four. All right, later, guys.